doesn't make any sense. It just says notice of possession proceedings. Well, they were issued five years ago. Why are they? Elizabeth Watson is about to lose her Bournemouth home. Thirteen years ago, she went to the Bank of Scotland for a loan to invest in a scheme which promised high returns. She says she was told the scheme had the backing of senior people at the Bank of Scotland, and the bank was keen to offer her £345,000 secured against her house. But the investment turned out to be a huge fraud, and we think the bank should have known that at the time. I've become obsessed. Um, I, the fight for justice is so enormous. Um, I've been wrestling with, with the courts. Um, I don't know how to, to, to put it in words other than to say it's, it's ruined my life. It all began with an accountancy firm, formerly based in Nottingham and Leicester, called Dobb White, whose partners, Alan White and Shin Ganga, targeted wealthy families with the promise of returns of up to 160%. The pair got close to one of the managers of the Bank of Scotland, Fraser Mackay, offering him hospitality at champagne receptions and football matches and introducing him to potential investors as the man who could sort out loans. There's no suggestion Fraser Mackay knew it would turn out to be a fraudulent scheme, but there were plenty of signs that should have made him wary, not least the lies told and extraordinary returns promised by one of the fraudsters, Shin Ganga. I mean, total temptation. You know, he made it sound amazing. He said, um, we can generate returns on a best efforts basis. The main thing is your capital is safe. He said it's risk free. Um, and he made it sound watertight. He said that he had a fantastic new opportunity that was opening up a new area of the financial markets and um, that he had the backing of the Bank of Scotland and um, he had a fantastic relationship with them at board level and that he could arrange loans um, to invest in this special bond underwriting scheme that they were running. The reason Shin Ganga was offering returns too good to be true was because he was a crook operating a fraudulent scheme which collapsed. He was sent to jail and the scheme's investors were left hundreds of thousands of pounds out of pocket. That isn't the half of it. Shin Ganga already had a criminal record, and his dodgy accountancy firm had long been banned by the Financial Services Authority from handling client money. Fraser Mackay and the Bank of Scotland should have known this, but they didn't check. Financial journalist Ian Fraser is highly critical of the Bank of Scotland's actions, both in making loans to invest in what turned out to be a fraudulent scheme and in pursuing numerous victims of the fraud for their homes. So how would you characterise the way banks were lending back in 2001? It was insane. They were just lending to anyone with a pulse, virtually. They, they, they didn't care if there was fraud. They didn't care if people made up the information on the loan application. In fact, they positively encouraged that, some banks, including Bank of Scotland. They basically wanted to put the money out the door and they did not care about all the proper work that should go on around that, including authentication of documents, etc. The whole attitude was, was a bit like the Wild West. You know, we had a, a, almost like a Wild West situation in UK banking at that time where you know, controls, where risk management, where credit checking, where a lot of these things were wholly inadequate and you know, we're now reaping the consequences of that behaviour. Let, let me put this to you. This, yeah. is, this is what the Bank of Scotland are saying about what yeah. happened. They never endorsed the Dobbwhite yeah. scheme. All the loans that they issued were according to the relevant processes. Well, the Bank of Scotland had an obsession with growth at that period because it had just merged with Halifax and it wanted to really grow its loan book and it was determined to be as big as other banks, you know, like Barclays or HSBC or RBS. And so it was going hell for leather as a lender and it was lending quite in a quite a reckless or cavalier manner, both on the corporate side, which is to businesses, and on the retail side to individuals. It was so obsessed with growth it lost sight of the fundamentals of banking, which are, you know, can the borrower pay the money back? One of the risks of taking out a mortgage or a loan secured against your home is that if you don't pay it back or the interest on it, then the bank can repossess your property. Now, to protect homeowners from making decisions which could leave them homeless, any lender has to be satisfied that you have the means or capacity to pay back the money you're borrowing aside from the equity on your house. Under Fraser Mackay at the Bank of Scotland in 2001, the victims we've spoken to claim this was not being properly done. 
For many of them, their only real source of income was the returns from the Dob White scheme. From what we've been able to find out, at least seven people lent money by the Bank of Scotland have had their homes repossessed or been forced to sell them to avoid repossession. Others have had to give the bank their life savings. To save their homes, some victims signed a legally binding gagging order to stop them speaking out about how the bank has treated them. By talking to us even anonymously, these people could be breaking the gagging order, but they now realise staying silent means the story can't ever get out. Why did the Bank of Scotland lend you money? The only grounds it was given to me was on the grounds of the income from the Dob White scheme, because I had no other income whatsoever. And the bank knew that? Correct. Because if someone is going to offer you money secured against your home as a loan, there has to be a pretty certain source of income coming in. That's right. And that's what I was offered, and that's what happened. Do you think you were being foolish? If you have a bank that is happy to fund you and give you an unlimited credit card, happy to give you an overdraft, an extra loan, all on the basis of income from this particular scheme, why should I ask questions about the bank's knowledge? If they're happy, why shouldn't I be? When Shingangas' investment scheme collapsed, more than £100 million disappeared. Many people lost their life savings and only a fraction of the cash was ever recovered. The whole world collapsed around us. We just saw a big black hole. Everything we ever had, all gone and lost. It was a matter of selling our house, selling our car, selling everything we could lay hands on and trying to keep going. Having lent you the money for this fraudulent investment, what did the bank say when you found out you'd lost everything? Oh, they wanted their money back. Full stop. Absolutely. And the solicitors they put on to us to repossess the house were very aggressive. How are things now? My credit status is zero. I'm in a rented house. I'm on state pension with pension credit. Nothing left. The banks say, first of all, they did not recommend this Dob White scheme. Secondly, that the loans were issued correctly. Mm. And thirdly, if their customers can't repay their loans, that's not their problem, and they've got to call in the money. So the bank is saying they're entirely justified in seeking to uh, evict these people from their homes. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's uh, in my view, it's wrong. You know, I, they are in denial. They are trying to pretend that they have done absolutely nothing wrong. And they're doing it in order to preserve value for their current shareholders. We've been in phone and written communication with the Bank of Scotland for months now, but they haven't answered questions such as whether it was right for their manager, Mr Mackay, to accept hospitality from Shinganga, and whether they were aware that the Dob White firm was under investigation by the financial authorities at the time of these so-called investments. The Bank of Scotland have refused to give Inside Out an interview. I did speak to a representative who denied the bank gave customers any recommendations about the Dob White scheme. He also said that all loans were issued in accordance with the relevant processes, but then refused to explain what those processes were. You might think a fool and their money are easily parted. After all, if something appears too good to be true, it usually is. But this isn't some pub scam we're talking about. Fraser Mackay was a senior manager at the Bank of Scotland. For the victims we spoke to, he was the face of the bank and he was a figure of authority. His department's willingness to loan them money to invest in Dob White was for them an endorsement of the scheme. Since retiring from the Bank of Scotland, Mr Mackay has led an active life, jetting off to places like Marrakesh, Moscow and Nepal and detailing his adventures online. We eventually tracked Fraser Mackay down. He was happy to chat to us at length off the record and said neither he or the bank had done anything wrong. But he suddenly went very quiet when we asked him to put his point of view on camera. Well, we've had no joy from the phone calls, the texts, the letters, all the emails that we've sent. So we're going to try the direct approach. I'm heading up to Chester, which is where Fraser Mackay retired to after he left the Bank of Scotland. And we're going to see if we can get some answers. Mr Mackay told us he was back from his latest trip, so we waited for him to turn up at his home address.
No response again. We've been buzzing Mr Mackay's apartment for the last two days and there's been no sign of life in there at all. So it looks like he's gone away or perhaps he's decided to lie low for a while. Our expert believes the refusal of anyone from the Bank of Scotland to properly answer our questions fits a familiar pattern of behaviour. In this case and in almost every case that I'm aware of, the banks never admit they've done anything wrong because it, they, they prefer to stonewall, they prefer to be in denial, they prefer to try to divide the victims. There's various strategies which they and other banks have used over the years. And the hope is that you know, if they just stonewall for long enough, the customers who have lost money will just go away, die, commit suicide or whatever. So then the bank won't have to pay anything back. It's, it's just an astonishing, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying in this particular instance, but the bank's behavior since the crisis has been abhorrent. Most banks have behaved in, a, in an abhorrent manner. They haven't acknowledged they've done anything wrong. They haven't admitted that they have made, made well, some have, some have admitted they've made mistakes. But generally, they've been in a state of denial and believing they can just carry on behaving in more or less the same manner. These banks should be brought to task. A lot of them have spent, well, they've just ruined people's lives. And I don't want them to, they've ruined our lives in the sense that for 12 years we've had it around our, our heads. But I don't want to see both my daughters, who are still relatively young compared with me, uh, <clears throat> lose their homes. They don't deserve to. But there has been some movement. Since Inside Out has been in contact with the bank about this investigation, they've written to Liz Watson offering to stop repossession proceedings by suggesting both parties sit down with an independent mediator to sort things out. We've also been in contact with the Financial Conduct Authority, which has the power to issue multi-million pound fines to banks who break the rules. The FCA has taken a keen interest in what we've uncovered and promised to look closely at the evidence. Meanwhile, the Bank of Scotland continues to claim they did nothing wrong in depositing customers' money with an accountancy firm banned from taking it. Nor would they comment on whether Fraser Mackay's friendly relationship with Shin Ganga made the Dob White scheme look legitimate. They also make no excuse or apology for going after their customers when that scheme collapsed. After all, if you end up losing your home because you took out a loan that you didn't have the means to repay, that's not the bank's problem, that's just business. <laughs>